GNS3 have released a Windows appliance. If you bring a new Windows 7 appliance into the workspace, that's a brand new Windows 7 appliance. So it'll act like a separate uh, virtual machine in GNS3. So I can start this appliance up and open up a console to the appliance. As you can see here, it's booting up. Here's my first Windows 7 VM. Here's my second one, both of which are running on the GNS3 VM, both of which are running within my GNS3 topology. So again, what I recommend that you do is when the appliance boots up for the first time, you simply wait for it to install the necessary drivers. And when you see restart now, you restart the device. Otherwise, you're going to find the mouse interaction very poor and perhaps very frustrating. So simply allow it to boot up again. So while we're waiting for that, I'll go onto this Windows 7 VM and I'll disable the Windows firewall. So I'll turn this all off and click OK. On the second VM, I'll change the screen resolution. So I'll set this to 1024 by 768. Click OK. Keep my changes. I'll change the Windows background to Windows 7. Or well, actually, let's change it to something else so that we can see the difference between the two. So, so here's Windows 7 VM1. Here's VM2. I should be able to ping google.com from the second VM, which I can. And I should be able to ping the first Windows PC, which I can. So Windows 7.2 can ping Windows 7.1. And again, Windows 7.2 can access the internet. So I should be able to go to google.com. And there you go. So I think this is a game changer. In the same way as the network automation appliance from GNS3 has made it so easy to set up Python and Ansible within GNS3, this Windows appliance makes it very easy to set up Windows PCs within GNS3. Now again, there are different versions of Windows. The requirements for Windows 10 is going to be a lot greater than the requirements for Windows 7. So decide which version of Windows you want to run within the GNS3 VM. Memory requirements and disk space will vary depending on which VM you decide to install on the GNS3 VM. But this makes things really simple. You can bring network devices into your topology and then access them from your Windows PC. So I'll bring in a Cisco IOS V switch, as well as a router. Boot them up, and I'll open up a console to the router. Open up a console to the switch. So as soon as these are booted, I should be able to access them from the Windows PC. So while I'm here, what I'll do is download PuTTY to the Windows PC. So I'll select PuTTY, and I'm not going to download the install file. I'm simply going to download the 32-bit EXE and save that to my hard drive. 
I'll open up uh, the folder. PuTTY is now available, so I'll double click on PuTTY and click Run. I now have PuTTY ready. So the router has booted up, so I'll set up a hostname of router1. On the first gigabit interface, configure an IP address of 192.168.122.72 as an example. No shut of the interface. Go into the VTY lines, click login, password Cisco, and create an enable password of Cisco. So from within PuTTY now, I should be able to telnet to the router. So on the router, can I ping myself, 122.72? Yes, I can. Can the PC ping the router? So ping 192.168.122.72? Yes, it can. So let's try and telnet to the router. 192.168.122.72. Getting connection refused, so let's see what I did wrong. Show run pipe begin VTY. Notice transport input none here, so line VTY 0 to 4. Transport input all. I'll restart this session. And notice I can now log in to the router. So I've been able to telnet from Windows to the router. So as an example, Notice the router name is router1, but in Windows, I'll change it to router1 GNS3. Notice the name is changed through the GNS3 console. So I've been successfully able to integrate Windows 7 machines with iOS devices. I'll quickly set up the switch. So hostname switch1, interface VLAN1, IP address 192.168. 122.73. Now you don't have to use the subnet. I'm using it because of the NAT cloud. Enable password Cisco. Line VTY04. Login password Cisco. Transport input all. Show IP interface brief. Switch has an IP address configured, so back in Windows. I'll open up a new PuTTY session to 192.168.122.73. It's going to be Telnet. And I can log into the switch. Change the settings here. And notice there I am connected to the switch. So host name, let's change that. Currently it's switch 1. So host switch one, GNS3. Notice the host name has changed. So that was a very basic example of showing the integration between the Windows appliance and a GNS3 network. I showed you how to download the Windows appliance, how to install it in GNS3, and how to integrate it with other GNS3 devices, such as Cisco routers and switches. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.